Hello fellow modelers! In today's video I prepared another lovely jet fighter. I chose kit made by Trumpeter. Or not. Water slide decals could be better and have a wrong text font. Therefore I purchased a better kit made by Italari. The box art is amazing. The decals looks more accurate and usable. There are 5 markings and it is hard to choose one. However, I like the wings from the Trumpeter kit more because they allow raised slots and flaps and have uh, better details. On the other hand, the Trumpeter fuselage is horrible and has the wrong shapes. The most significant mistake is air intake. The real one looks like a different airplane. The Italari air intake part is more accurate. However, I have a small problem. It is F version with two seats. So I must use the whole fuselage. So it's going to be fun. I use fuselage from Italari and wings and detail bars from Trumpeter kit. You know, minor improvements. I'm cutting out Italari wings with a razor saw because the cut is narrow and thin. Then I decided to switch air brake and wheel well. I like removing plastic with a carbide milling cutters because they are strong and the plastic is like a butter for them. The air brake is slightly smaller, so a styrene plastic board is good for covering large gaps. Also, the wheel well has trumpeter slightly better and more detailed. The wings fit relatively well. Italari has a plastic cap in the air intake, so I remove it with a milling cutter and added parts from the second kit. However, it didn't fit perfectly, so I was forced to extend and model the rest of the shape with a two component epoxy party. This party is perfect because you can smooth it with the water and when it dries it's stone solid. I still cannot believe how the bad shape is. The cockpit lacks details and is primarily too shallow, so I'm making it deeper with a styrene plastic and editing more details from photo edge metal parts. I have some old sets from Edart. I use the seats from the Trumpeter. I was lucky that there were two of them, even if it was a single seat version. I'm making seat belts from flat lead wires. This material is excellent because it's nicely flexible, soft and holds the shape. The instrument panel does not have enough details, so I designed new parts in 3D and print them. I think they are slightly better. I am too lazy to paint the instruments freehand, so I cut the decals into small pieces and place them in the direct place. Some parts have a half of the millimeter. I smooth the decals with the decals chemicals. This way they nicely copy surface shapes. I 
I am making cover glass with a clear lacquer varnish and some shading with an enamel brown wash. I like how the Supra Saber cockpit is colorful. I am painting details of acrylic paints like Zadel or Vallejo. And more shading with wash. It makes details more pronounced. These details will be hardly visible, because it is only 7 to scale, but I like it. I am filling seam lines with a flexible black superglue, because it's more stable against lacquer paints and chemicals, and it does not create seam marks. I forgot to add the counterweight, so I think the lead ammo to BB gun will be suitable. I noticed another problem. Trumpeter turned a low-wing aircraft into mid-wing aircraft. According to detailed blueprint, the wings are too high. The detail set made by Eddard helps to improve some details under slots and in the exhaust. If you want to improve model quality, then I highly recommend looking at rivets or bolts. This plane has a lot of excess panels, so if you will imitate at least some, the finished model will be more interesting and detailed. You can find the blueprints on Google, but the best are in the books or magazines. I use rose riveting wheels, but this company does not exist anymore, so you can make your own or buy an alternative like Be Easy. Some panel lines are too shallow or missing. I like describing them with a cheap, versatile razor saw. I recently purchased handy crocodile clips from AliExpress. They allow comfortable handling while spraying. I designed a printable box where you can place parts for drying. It is available for free on my Patreon. Now I'm spraying primer, which unifies the surface into one shade and reveals imperfections like dust particles, cracks, sink marks or scratches. And more riveting. It is easy to make rivets freehand alongside panel lines, but for the rest it's better to draw guidelines, or even for better result use masking tape.
the result with the rivets looks like some larger scale model. I made new reinforcements guide pins from hypodermic needles for the wings. I like to place small parts with the wax pencil, which allows more comfortable manipulation. Another cool gadget, I bought this handy riveting tool from Aliexpress, which allows you to make rivets near edges. If you want to make this model even more accurate, then I recommend replacing wheels of the resin ones, the kit bars are too thin. Now you cannot recognize that I used two kits for this model. I designed in 3D two new boarding ladders and print them. The long one is for two seat version. But I will use small ones, I think it looks better. The printable files are available for my Patreons or on Cult3D. I also printed small landing reflectors, which are located near the front gear. Last but not least, I found that the cockpit canopy shape is also wrong. Hopefully, there is available replacement vacuum part made by Rob Taurus. The handy is to place masking tape as a guide for cutting. I like Super Sabre long pitot tube in the front. The plastic is horrible, so you can make a new one from three hypodermic needles. However, I also use a brass tube. This upgrade is cheap and looks splendid, but be careful not to poke it in the eye. It is hard to see it in the scale. The last improvement is a few pipes and cables into the wheel well. Now the painting. I think after all these modifications it is easy task. The Super Saber was quite shiny plain, so good base under the silver is close black. It will make the best shiny effect. Now I'm spraying Mr. Color Super Metallic Chrome Silver. I like these paints because they have a soft pigment and looks good even on 72 scale models. You can notice that panels on the real planes had different shades. You can imitate this effect by purchasing more expensive metallic shades or mixing silver paint with a gloss white for white aluminum or gloss black for dark metal. Honestly, I was looking forward to this part. I like weathering effect of burned metal around the engine. It has lovely yellow, red, purple and blue shades. Like here on the photo of a real saber. I mix transparent acrylic paints with a lot of thinner. Good life hack is to store pre-diluted paint in syringes. I start with a light shade and that is yellow. I recommend low pressure of 15 psi and spraying many soft layers. 
You can see that the rivet lines are helping me with the spraying, because the shade should be lighter around the rivets. I highly recommend training soft shading on some spare models, because even slightly moves on the airbrush trigger can cause spitting or stains. The third shade is purple. I mix blue and red transparent paints. This effect is much easier on larger scale models, because you can use a denser dilution and be less precise, or use some metallic paints instead of transparent ones. I sprayed the blue shade only on the back section. Who said that the weathering on the airplanes is ugly? Now only the decals and we are done. Another cool stuff from AliExpress for a few dollars is this water slide decal box. It makes decals fresh for a long time, so you don't need to be worried that they will dry if you do not use them. Vitellar decals are relatively soft, so good for setting is decal setting chemicals. I had bad luck with this model. Ok, I must conclude that even Italar kid has horrible decals. The labels are large. Some looks they are designed for 48 scale. Primarily labels and aircraft numbers should be smaller than they are. On the other hand, the front green strip needs to be longer, so I sprayed a new one with the paints. I fixed decals of decals chemicals, but on shiny metallic surface could be easily removed. So it is good to unify the model with a clear acrylic varnish. Do not use lacquer super clear, because you can destroy the shiny metallic effect. I am mixing brown wash from odorless thinner and oil paint. This dirt liquid makes panel lines and rivets darker and more pronounced. I am painting oil leaks and dirt with a denser oil paint. It is good to combine black and brown shades. It still needs more dirt to be painted, but I'm glad this project is done. The first idea was that it would be easy and fast built after a crazy Felix Toe model, but it went wrong in all directions. The trumpeter kit had horrible shapes and decals, and the second Italeric kit had better shapes but missing details and had inaccurate water slide decals. So it is hard to choose one. I tried to make the model more accurate 
but even so, it is not a competition model due to many mistakes. I hope you like the result even so. The following projects will be more accurate, or maybe I will print them instead. Okay, thank you for watching, thank you for support and see you next time!